Hi everyone, welcome to today's GCSE Foundation Revision video. It's 37 days to go to GCSE Maths exam, that first paper, so keep up the hard work, you're doing really well. And today we're focusing on a few different topics. We're going to be looking at reading tables, two-way tables, timetables, actually anything with tables and a coffee table, league tables, no, no. And we're going to be looking at reading tables, two-way tables and timetables today. So we're going to look at how to answer some questions involved in those, so our questions on reading tables, some questions involved in two-way tables and timetables and so on. So we're going to be looking at those today. I really hope you found this video useful. If you need to pause the video at any point to do the questions, feel free to pause it and to try the questions as we go through to give you some practice in each of those. So let's get started. Hi, let's start by looking at reading tables. So here's the table and we've got some caravans, how many people each caravan sleeps, whether they've got cots, decking or barbecues and the price of hiring the caravan. And here's some questions involving this table. So feel free to press pause now and answer these two questions. Okay, so the first question says, which caravan sleeps six people and has a cot? So in terms of the caravans that sleep six people, well, this caravan, the luxury caravan, sleeps six people, and so does the family caravan. These two caravans both uh, sleep six people. In terms of which one's got a cot, as you can see here, the family caravan has a cot, but the luxury one doesn't. We were asked which caravan sleeps six people and has a cot. Well, that's going to be the family caravan, so the family, so the family caravan. Okay, let's have a look at the next question. The next question says, which caravans have decking? Well, as you can see here, decking, the luxury caravan, and the comfort caravan have decking. So let's write that down. And if you got that, well done. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. Okay, this time we've got another table. So we've got some cars, the price of the cars, the age of the cars, the mileage of the cars, and their road tax. And the question says, Killian would like to buy a car with a mileage below 40,000 miles. He's got £16,000 to spend. Which car should he buy? So feel free to press pause now to work out this question. Okay, so he's got £16,000 to spend. So he can't buy the Explorer, the Ford, the or the Tiny or the Cheetah. So he can't buy those cars because each of those cars costs more than £16,000. So he's only got three cars he can buy, the Nia, the Wander and the Leap. And he wants to buy a car with a mileage below 40,000 miles. Well, the Nia, its mileage is above 40,000. So is the Leap. Whereas the Wander, its mileage is below 40,000. It costs below £16,000. So which car should he buy? The answer is the Wander. And if you got that, well done. Now that's reading tables. Now with reading tables, I highly recommend the practice questions today because you're not entirely sure what type of table they may have put in in the GCSE maths exam. So have a look at the reading tables practice questions because they give you just some more practice with different types of tables you may encounter. Okay, let's look at the next topic. So the next topic is two-way tables. So here's a two-way table. We've got art and English or English and art and we've got pass and fail. So obviously some students are sitting art or English exams and they can either pass or fail them. And then we've got the totals. And the question says fill out this two-way table. So feel free to press pause now and fill out this two-way table. Okay, so in terms of filling out this two-way table, I could either start here or here. I'm going to start here. Altogether, 13 students failed and 12 failed arts. So that means that one failed English because these two numbers, the one and the 12, have to add together to be 13. Okay, next, let's look at the students who study art. There's 19 of them altogether and 12 failed. So that means that seven must have passed. Okay, next, let's find out how many people passed, how many students passed their exams altogether. 25 plus 7. 25 plus 7 is equal to 32. Okay, next, the total. So 32 plus 13 would be equal to 45. And finally, 25 plus 1 would be 26. Altogether, it's 26 students who study English. And if we just check, 26 plus 19 is 45. So that's it. And if you filled out that two-way table and got those numbers, well done. Okay, now that two-way table is quite nice because it was it was drawn for us. Let's have a look at one where you may have to draw the two-way table yourself. So here we've got some information. We've got 150 students are in year 10 and 11 and they visit a school canteen. Some students have packed lunches and some students have cooked dinners or cooked lunch. Uh, 56 out of the 89 students who have packed lunch are in year 10. The 72 students in year 11. And the question says, work out how many year 10 students have cooked lunch. So in terms of this question, we've got the fact they're in year 10 and year 11 and whether they've got packed lunch lunch and cook lunch. So this type of question has a lot of information. So creating a two-way table would be really useful. So feel free to press pause now, create a two-way table for this information, try and complete it and work out how many year 10 students had a cook lunch. So do that now. Okay, so I've just made a little table for year 10 and year 11, and we've got packed lunch and cooked lunch. So packed lunch, cooked lunch, and we've got the totals as well. And let's fill out some information. We're told there's 150 students in year 10 and 11. So there's 150 students all together. Some of the students have packed lunch, some have cooked lunch. 56 out of the 89 students who had a packed lunch. 89 students had a packed lunch, 89 in total. And 56 of them are in year 10. So 56 of them are in year 10. And we're also told there's 72 students in year 11. So in year 11, there's 72 students. So let's complete this two-way table. 
So I'm going to fill in this number to begin with. Altogether, there's 150 students and 89 have packed lunches. So if we do 150, take away 89, that's equal to that's equal to 61. So 61 students had a cooked lunch. So 89 plus 61 gives us 150 altogether. Now let's find this number here, how many year 10 students there are. 150 take away 72 is equal to 78. So the 78 year 10 students. Now let's fill in these numbers. So to find this number, we would do 89 take away 56 because if 89 students had packed lunches and 56 of them are in year 10, the rest of them obviously in year 11. So 89 take away 56 is equal to 33. So there's 33 year 11 students that have a packed lunch. Okay, next let's find out how many year 10 students had a cooked lunch. Actually, that's what we're asking this question. So 78 take away 56 is equal to 22. So that's 22. And let's just fill in the missing number anyway. Uh, we could do this in a couple of different ways. We could do 61 take away 22, and that's equal to 39. So 61 take away 22 is equal to 39. Or you could have done 72 take away 33 is also equal to 39. And that's that number. Now the question says how many year 10 students had a cooked lunch? The answer would be 22. The answer is 22 there. So the answer is 22. And that's it. And if you got that, well done. Okay, so that's two-way tables. Um, sometimes they're drawn for you and they're quite nice, but sometimes you've got to draw them yourself or make them yourself, and then you just need to make sure that you write down and list all the information you're given. Okay, so we've looked at reading tables, we've looked at two-way tables, now let's have a look at timetables. Okay, let's have a look at our next topic. Our next topic is timetables, and as you can see, here's a bus timetable, and we've been given a question. Dara's traveling to Samville. He arrives at Milton bus station at 10.45. What time should he arrive at Samville? So feel free to press pause now to work out this question. Okay, so there's three buses. There's a bus that leaves Southville at 9.18, and it gets the leak at 9.28, gets the Milton at 9.41, and so on. So that's the first bus. The next column's the next bus. It leaves Southville at 10.38, gets the leak at 10.48, gets the Milton at 11.01, and so on. And then you've got this express bus. It leaves Southville at 12.05. It doesn't stop at Leak, Milton, or Newtown. Perhaps it's a motorway or something it can travel on. It arrives at Red Island at 12.36, doesn't stop at Sandville, and then gets to Bakerstown. So this is an express bus. It only goes to some of the stops. So as you can see, we've got three buses, and the question says, Dara's traveling to Sandville, so he's traveling to Sandville, so he's traveling to Sandville, and he arrives at Milton bus station, so that's where he's traveling from. He's traveling from Milton to Sandville, and he arrives at Milton bus station at 10.45. So he arrives at 10.45, so he's missed that bus. So that bus obviously left at 9.41, so he's not going to be getting that one. The next bus is at 11.01. That's the next bus that he can get, and actually the express bus doesn't even go to Milton, so that's the only bus he can get from this timetable and the question says what time should he arrive at sandville so he the bus he gets at 11.01 he gets to newtown at 11.09 gets to red island at 11.15 and arrives at sandville at 11.33 so the question says what time should he arrive in sandville the answer is 11 33 and um, now and that's it and if you got that well done and this question we could have been asked some other questions we could have been asked how long does he need to wait until he gets his bus and then you'd work out the time between 10 45 and 11 or 1 so you'd have to wait another 16 minutes we could have been asked how long should the bus take him and that'd be 32 minutes it should take 32 minutes to get from milton to sandville or in this case we're asked what time should he arrive there and so on so there's different questions you could be asked with timetables so i'd highly recommend you look at the corporate maps practice questions and timetables because they give you a range of questions that you could be asked that with timetables and so on. Okay, let's have a look at one more question. So this time we've got Antrim, Randallstown, Ballymena and Ballycastle. And we're told that Noel lives in Randallstown and his friend lives in Ballycastle. So he lives in Randallstown and his friend lives in Ballycastle. And Noel lives a 10 minute walk from the bus stop in Randallstown. His friend lives a 12 minute walk from the bus stop in Ballycastle. Noel needs to arrive at his friend's house before 3.15. So he needs to arrive at his house before 3.15. Perhaps it's a football match or something starting on TV and he wants to watch to catch the start of it. Don't know why it's starting at quarter past three, but it is. <laughs> but he needs to arrive at his friend's house before 3.15. Maybe they're going somewhere else. And we need to plan Noel's journey. So we need to plan his journey. So the most important thing is that he arrives at his friend's house before 3.15. Feel free to press pause now and plan Noel's journey from his house to his friend's house and uh, plan his journey out. Well, he's not going to be getting this bus here. This bus here, it'll arrive in Ballycastle at 9 minutes past 5, so he's not going to be getting that bus. In terms of this bus here, if he was to get this bus, the 2.15 bus at Randallstown, it'll arrive in Ballycastle at 9 minutes past 3, but his friend lives a 12-minute walk from the bus stop. So that means that if we add on 12 minutes, that would be that would mean that he'd be arriving at 3.21 or 21 minutes past 3, but he has to arrive before quarter past 3 for some reason, so he can't be getting that bus, okay? Because if he gets this bus, Bus. He arrives in Ballycastle. He should arrive at Ballycastle at 3.09. And he wants to arrive at his friend's house at 3.15. 
three fifteen, but his friend lives twelve minutes away from the bus stop. So if he walks from the bus stop to the house, he'd arrive at three twenty one. So unless the bus is uh, you know truck arrives early, um, he, he's not going to be guaranteed to get there before three fifteen. So I wouldn't risk it. So I would get this bus here if I was Noel. I'd get this bus here, and this bus leaves Randallstown at quarter past one and it arrives in Bally Castle at nine minutes past two and we need to plan his journey so let's plan his journey let's say when he needs to leave his house let's say then when he needs to get to the bus stop for what bus he's going to be getting what time he should arrive in Bally Castle and what time he should arrive at his friend's house so let's write that down Okay, so the first thing I've written down is that Noel should leave his house before five past one. Because he lives 10 minutes away from the bus stop, if he was to leave at five past one, he would get there at one fifteen, which is just the time that the bus should be arriving and leaving Randallstown. So I would have leave just before that, just so that he you know, has a little bit of extra time just to make sure he gets to the bus stop on time, just in case the bus is a little bit early. So I would say that he should leave his house before five past one. I've then said he should catch the quarter past one bus to Bally Castle. I've then written down he should arrive at nine minutes past two. Obviously, with buses, you're not entirely guaranteed that it's going to arrive at exactly nine minutes uh, past two. But he should arrive by nine minutes past two. And because his friend lives 12 minutes away from the bus stop, if we add on 12 minutes, that'll be 21 minutes past two. So I've written down he should arrive at his friend's house at 21 minutes past two. Obviously, unless there's some delays. And that's before quarter past three, which he needs to arrive at his friend's house before that time. And, you know, obviously we arrive a wee bit early and that's, that's fine. And that's it. So we've planned his journey. And if you got that, well done. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at our tables, we've looked at reading tables, we've looked at two-way tables, and we've even looked at timetables in terms of buses and travel and things like that. So I really hope you find this video useful. These are topics where I would say generally you want to try and make sure you're getting the full marks on. So for instance, a reading table should hopefully be touch wood, um, you know, quite a safe topic to hopefully try and get marks from. So make sure you're really confident with it. Two-way tables. And obviously with two-way tables, there's the quite straightforward ones, but then there's also some wordy questions on two-way tables. So if you want to practice those in the description below, there's a link to the practice questions. And again, timetables. They're questions where hopefully you should be getting those touch wood safe marks. So keep up the hard work. You're doing really well. And I'll see you tomorrow for 36 days to go to your GCSE maths exam. Cheers. Bye.